This morning I'm continuing the message series called Winning My Battles. Now every person faces battles. We can't avoid them. We may face some relationship battles, some emotional battles, financial battles, career battles. We may even face uh, some of those personal and spiritual battles that come into our lives. Now, if we lose these battles, then we're going to live with defeat and remorse. But if we win these battles, we're going to live with victory and purpose. This message series is going to focus on the Old Testament character named Joshua. And like us, Joshua has some battles that he needs to win. Moses, the great leader of Israel, has died. And now Joshua is the new leader. And he faces the challenge of leading the people to conquer the promised land. So today we're going to focus on the topic, get a team. Joshua is leading between one and two million people that are divided into 12 tribes. These tribes are not united by a central government. Every tribe is independent. So Joshua must find a way to unite the people. The tribes must come together as one team, one people, and one country. The promised land cannot be conquered by 12 weak, independent tribes. The promised land can only be conquered by a winning team. Harvard Business School conducted a teamwork experiment with its first year graduate students. Now, instead of the typical midterm case study exam, the students were divided at random into teams of four. Each team was given a business problem to solve and 24 hours to come up with a solution. All team members would receive the same grade. Initially, there was a lot of criticism and a lot of complaining, the professor stated. Some students complained that their grade would be adversely affected by the fact that they were thrown onto a team with people that they would have never selected. The professor's response, welcome to the real world. <laughs> the professor continued, the most significant level of learning took place among students who were involved in a team where it didn't go so well. On some teams, there was tremendous disagreements, and these are the students who learned the most from the whole process. Every day, in some way, you are part of a team, and your success in life in many ways will be determined by the success of those teams. You must learn how to function as a team member, you must think not just about yourself, but about your teammates. And you must understand that the team comes first and you come second. Now, teams come in a variety of shapes and sizes. If you're married, you and your spouse are a team. Your mate is not your enemy. Your mate is your teammate. If you have children, your children are your teammates. They're part of your family. They're part of your team. If you're employed in an organization, you and your colleagues are a team. You have to work together to become successful. First Baptist Church of Crystal River is a spiritual team. We're a spiritual family. We work together to achieve common goals. So the question is not, will I participate on a team? The question is, what will be my involvement with my teammates? Will we become successful? Will my team become a winning team? Will Joshua be able to put together a winning team? Will you end up with a winning team? Well, if you have your Bible this morning, I invite you to open it to the Old Testament book of Joshua, chapter 1. We read about how Joshua puts together his winning team in Joshua chapter 1, verses 10 
through 18. So Joshua chapter 1, beginning with verse 10. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. But to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, Remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you after he said, The Lord your God will give you rest by giving you this land. Your wives, your children, and your livestock may stay in the land that Moses gave you east of the Jordan. But all your fighting men, ready for battle, must cross over ahead of your fellow Israelites. You are to help them until the Lord gives them rest as he has done for you. And until they too have taken possession of the land, the Lord your God is giving them. After that, you may go back and occupy your own land, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you east of the Jordan toward the sunrise. Then they answered Joshua, Whatever you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we fully obey Moses, so will we obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey it, whatever you may command them will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. A celebration is taking place on a passenger cruise line. The captain, the crew, and several of the guests step forward and give a speech praising one man. Sitting at the head table is a 70-year-old man who's getting quite embarrassed by all the accolades that are being poured upon him. You see, earlier that morning, a young woman somehow fell overboard. And within seconds, this elderly gentleman was in the water, swimming to her rescue. When it became time for this brave hero to give his speech, the room fell silent. He makes his way to the microphone. And he gives what is probably the shortest hero speech ever given at any time. He simply speaks these stirring words. I just want to know one thing, he says. Who pushed me overboard? <laughs> well, sometimes you can be a hero on your own. Sometimes even a hero that you don't want to be. But most times, you need a team. Joshua builds a winning team. He builds a successful team. And in the process, Joshua teaches us three lessons about winning teams. So we need to apply these same three lessons that Joshua learned so that the teams in our life can likewise be winning Teams. So number one, a winning team has increased potential. A team can do more than any one person. John Maxwell writes, no one individual can accomplish anything great all by himself. So as much as we admire individual achievement in this country, we can't ignore this principle. The Lone Ranger mentality is a myth. There are no Rambos who can take on an entire army all by himself. And Joshua understands this principle. He knows that he can't take the promised land by himself. No individual tribe can take the land by itself. Israel is going to have to become a united people if they're going to conquer the land. So the first thing that Joshua does in leading the people is to rally his teammates. Verse 10 says that Joshua gives orders to the officers among the people. Each tribe has leaders 
that can take Joshua's message and then communicate that message to everyone in their tribe. So possessing the promised land is not a job for an individual. It's a job for a team. There's a Chinese proverb that states, behind an able man, there are always several able men. Joshua knows that he's going to need a team to accomplish something great. It would have taken Joshua days, maybe even months, to give instructions to all 12 tribes of Israel. So Joshua doesn't do that. Instead, he does the smart thing. He enlists the support of the officers who, in response, rally the people with this message in verse 11. Get ready. Three days from now, we're going to cross the Jordan River. Three days, and we begin the campaign to take possession of the promised land. Chuck Swindoll writes this about teamwork. Nobody is a whole team. We need each other. You need someone, and someone needs you. Isolated islands we are not. Since none of us is a whole, independent, self-sufficient, super capable, all-powerful hotshot, let's quit acting like we are. <laughs> the game is over. Let's link up. What does that mean? It means that you need to think of your marriage as a partnership. You and your spouse are on the same team. Your goal is to bring out the best in each other, not the worst. You're to work together to accomplish what neither could do alone. Parenting is a team effort, not a competition. Your children need to know that dad and mom love each other and that they're on the same team. No person can do everything at First Baptist Church. It takes an incredible team to accomplish all the ministries that happen here week after week. It takes a team to make the children's ministry happen. It takes a team to make the youth ministry happen. It takes a team to make the worship ministry happen. It takes a team to make the Agape House and Food Pantry happen. It takes a team to make Women on Mission happen. We're part of the same family. We're teammates. Shortly after the hurricane, we've witnessed an incredible team come together and do the necessary work to make our church ready for the restoration process. Day after day, people showed up and volunteered their time, their efforts, and their skills. God even brought people from other churches, uh, volunteers from a disaster relief team, and skilled workers to help us get the job done in record time. And there was a spirit of cooperation and working together that was astonishing. No one person could do that work alone. It took a team to do something great. As Lyndon Johnson once said, there are no problems we can't solve together and very few that we can solve by ourselves. A winning team has increased potential. Number two, a winning team knows its purpose. A team has to keep its eye on the goal. The goal gives the team direction. It gives vision. It provides the encouragement to keep going. And so Joshua keeps talking about the goal. He mentions in verse 11 that the goal is to go in and take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving you for your own. Then Joshua says to the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh in verse 15, 
that they are to keep their promise to fight alongside with their fellow Israelites until those people too enter the promised land and take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving them. The goal is to take possession of the land. So Israel must keep fighting until they reach their purpose of possessing the land. Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery, a leader of troops during World War II, who was called a soldier's general, wrote that every soldier must know before he goes into battle how the little battle he is to fight fits in with the larger picture and how the success of his fighting will influence the battle as a whole. A person purchasing an airline ticket always has a destination in mind. What is the destination for your teams? What vision do you have for your marriage? What vision do you have for your children? What vision do you have for your career? Do you know where you're going? And will you know it when you get there? Our purpose at First Baptist Church is to touch hearts and transform lives by sharing the love of Jesus Christ. Every ministry that helps people matters. Every life that is touched and transformed is our purpose. Our goal is to help people take the next step in their relationship with Jesus Christ. So a winning team knows its purpose and has every member of that team working to fulfill that purpose. Number three, a winning team utilizes all its players. A winning team needs every member of that team to make a contribution toward achieving the goal. A team with only half of its members contributing will be far less effective than a team where everyone participates. We must work together as a team to accomplish something that benefits everyone. Stanley Galt writes, we don't work for each other, we work with each other. There's a saying about teams, either we're pulling together or we're pulling apart. Joshua wants all 12 tribes to work together and help each other conquer the promised land. So Joshua says to the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, he addresses them personally because he wants to make sure they're going to keep their promise to fight alongside their fellow Israelites. Now, the book of Numbers, chapter 32, tells the story about how these two and a half tribes uh, basically requested from Moses that they would claim their inheritance east of the Jordan River. These tribes had a lot of livestock, and the land east of the Jordan River was well suited for their needs. The land was fertile. And it was perfect for grazing and pasturing their flocks. So these tribes come to Moses and say, we want to stay here. The land is perfect for all of our crops and all of our livestock. We don't want to go to all the trouble of crossing the Jordan River and trying to find a new land there. We want to stay here. And Moses agrees to their request with one condition. When the other tribes cross over the Jordan River, all of your fighting men are to cross that river too. And they're to fight alongside their fellow Israelites until the other tribes capture their inheritance west of the Jordan River. Now all of your 
wives and children and livestock can stay east of the river, but all the fighting men, 20 years old and older, must join the battle and fight for your fellow tribes. The men from these two and a half tribes agree that they're going to keep their end of the bargain. They say to Mo, uh, Joshua, you can count on us. The whole team will be there. Every person will participate. Whatever you tell us to do, we'll do it. Wherever you tell us to go, we'll go there. How about the teams in your life? Are they participating for the common good? I mean, how about your marriage? Are you pulling together or pulling apart? How about your family? Are you pulling together or are you pulling apart? How about your relationships at work and with the people in your neighborhood? Are you pulling together or are you pulling apart? Our vision at First Baptist Church is for everyone to pull together so that we can accomplish great things for the glory of God. It's our vision that everyone is busy doing their part and doing what they do best. And when that happens, we can accomplish great things. Every person is part of a team. Teamwork is about working with other people to accomplish common goals. And teamwork is so essential in life, whether it's at work, at home, or even at church. The ability to work together with other people gives you an opportunity to accomplish things that you could never do on your own. If you're going to win your battles in life, you're going to need a team. Joshua puts together a winning team. Are your teams winning right now? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us each other. Father, all of us individually can only do so much. But when we work together, incredible things become possible. Father, teach us the value of a team. That we're not here just to go solo. That we're not the Lone Ranger on a course all by ourselves. That we're here with our brothers and sisters in Christ where we can combine our skills and efforts and abilities and accomplish great things for you. Father, thank you that we don't have to do life alone. You've given us a team to do life with. And Father, may we love our teammates. May we appreciate our teammates. May we work alongside our teammates to make everybody better. Father, help us to know what it means to work as a team. Father, I thank you for what's already happened in just these past couple of weeks here at the church and how you put together a team to do incredible things. Father, may you continue to mold us into a winning team that we can continue to accomplish great things for you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.